Folks, there are a lot of people who've been asking, why exactly should Israel get military aid, but say not Ukraine? Well, the answer is that those two wars are very different right now. The issue in Ukraine is, is really not whether Russia is going to win there now. Russia is not going to defeat Ukraine. The issue is, what does an off-ramp look like? The issue is, can Ukraine maintain its own security inside the borders that it currently has? Because it was in America's interest to continue to bleed the Russian army. There's no question about this. This notion that it's in, it's in America's interest not to bleed the Russian army is bizarre to me. Russia's military has been quite aggressive. From Georgia to Crimea to the Donbass to Kazakhstan, the, the, the Russian military, used as an arm of imperialism by the Russian state, has been adverse to American interests across the world, including in the Middle East, where they've been very active in places like Syria because Barack Obama basically surrendered Syria to Russia, which was a bad move and has heightened the possibility of conflict in the Middle East. Again, second order of thinking. When you hand over Syria to the Russians, it turns out that the Russians are coordinating with the Iranians. That has impact on Ukraine because Iran is using, because Iran is working with the Russians to ship technology over. It has impact on the Middle East because Russia is helping Iran with its resource problems so it can distribute terror all over the Middle East. And that has impact on the world economy, as we've seen from the shocking extent of the economic impact on the world economy of the war in Ukraine. And there are a lot of interconnections in foreign policy. So what was America's interest in Ukraine? America's interest in Ukraine was, number one, preserving the independence of Ukraine against Russia. Number two, degrading the Russian military. And America has largely achieved both of those goals. And then it was in America's interest to continue to support Ukrainian action in the field until the point at which it was clear that a stalemate had been obtained. That is basically what has happened here. I'd be perfectly happy to continue funding the Ukrainians if they were actually capable of pushing the Russians out of Donbass or Crimea. They've shown no ability to do that. Then the question becomes, are we just throwing bad money after good beyond a certain point? That's the real question we should be asking in Ukraine. That, by the way, is a very different story from, for example, foreign aid to Israel in defeating Hamas, which is a very, very achievable goal. Hamas is a fairly small, moderately sized terrorist group compared to the Israeli military. The Israeli military certainly has the capacity to regain control of the security situation in the Gaza Strip, which is why I'll talk of a ceasefire now from a military real politique perspective is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Talk of some sort of solution in Ukraine right now makes sense since we've been doing this for a year and a half. The lines on the battlefield had basically been stagnant for at least six months. And we all knew where they were going to end up anyway. Okay, with that said, the Pentagon chief, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, has now made a surprise trip to the Ukrainian capital, trying to rally support for Ukraine, even suggesting Ukrainian forces would be even more aggressive in their fight against invading Russian forces throughout the winter. Austin's buoyant prediction about the next phase of fighting comes after Ukrainian forces failed to achieve any decisive breakthrough during a six-month counteroffensive, which came at a heavy cost for Ukrainian troops. I mean, the average age of members of the Ukrainian military is now 43. There's also serious concern in Ukraine about the longer-term future of U.S. military aid, with some Republicans wanting to halt support. Ukraine's ability to, quote-unquote, take the fight to the enemy, as Austin put it, will depend in large part on the continuation of U.S. military aid, including ammunition. But it is unclear whether the Ukrainians actually have the capacity to push the Russians back at this point. And they've shown no real ability to do so beyond the first few months of the war when they had widespread success. They keep promising there will be a breakthrough, but there hasn't really been a breakthrough along those lines. As former diplomat Richard Haas suggested, he said, maybe the solution in Ukraine is security guarantees to Ukraine. We make sure that such an invasion never happens again. Ukraine has the ability to withstand such an invasion. But let's be realistic. The battle lines ain't moving. Here's Richard Haas explaining. They're going to increasingly say, and we're hearing it in the House, we're hearing it in parts of Europe, why should we keep doing this? We're already stretched. We're trying to support Israel. We're worried about Taiwan. Uh, and even if we give everything we need to give or want to give to Ukraine, it still won't lead to success. What I argue, therefore, is the United States needs to have some very uh, direct conversations with Ukraine, with President Zelensky, talk about reducing their emphasis on liberating land, increasingly put all their emphasis on holding on to what they've got. In the long run, diplomatically through sanctions, yes, we can try to see the rest of their territory return. But for right now, let's have 80 percent of this country safe, 80 percent of this country uh, rebuilt. Okay, that happens to be a good real politic perspective. Again, American interests should be secured all over the globe. And we do have an interest in things that happen outside of our borders. I want to talk to you about Daily Wire's most trusted privacy partner and premier sponsor of this show, ExpressVPN. You probably heard by now, you should be using a VPN when you connect it to the internet. But if you're like me, adding an extra step to anything you do every day, well, it sounds like a pain in the butt. 
But if you knew how easy it is to protect your connection with ExpressVPN, you would be doing it already because it really is simple. ExpressVPN is the easiest way to browse safely and securely. ExpressVPN gets rid of all those things you hate about VPNs. It's a VPN done right. First of all, it is blazing fast. A lot of other VPNs slow your connection to the point where it's not even worth it to connect. But ExpressVPN doesn't lag or buffer. You can stream it in HD with no issues. Using ExpressVPN could not be easier. Just open the app, click one button, and enjoy instant protection across all your devices. Once you connect to ExpressVPN, you don't even realize you have it on. But your connection is secure. The data is encrypted. No wonder it's been called the best VPN by Business Insider and Tech Radar. Right now, head on over to expressvpn.com slash Ben. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Ben to get three extra months of ExpressVPN. Expressvpn.com slash Ben. There's a lot at stake this November, so don't be a chicken and shop at the grocery store like usual. Instead, head on over to Good Ranchers, where they have great meat puns, but even better meat. Do not miss their Black Friday Your Way sale. It is now live. This November, get your favorite meat free for a year. That is correct. One year of free steak, salmon, chicken, or bacon when you subscribe to any box right now. Better yet, when you subscribe to any box on GoodRanchers.com, you not only get a free gift of meat worth up to 480 bucks, you also get 15 bucks off with code Shapiro. The only deal your grocery store offers is on expiring foods, so ditch the meat aisle and subscribe at GoodRanchers.com today. They actually shipped me a very special shipment of kosher salmon, and it is, in fact, excellent. I mean, they made me a kosher steak at one point. That was great. I'm just telling you, their stuff is high quality. Claim your year of free meat, 15 bucks off, free shipping with my code Shapiro at GoodRanchers.com. Good Ranchers is the number one place to get all American beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. That is promo code Shapiro at GoodRanchers.com. Good Ranchers is American meat delivered. Go check them out right now. GoodRanchers.com, free shipping with code Shapiro. Meanwhile, Joe Biden continues to sink in the polls. And again, the jokes are now made about Biden. This is bad news for Biden. When the comedians turn on Biden, that's a real problem. They never turned on Barack Obama. They were too busy massaging him. They were too busy performing other specified acts uh, upon him. Stephen Colbert, however, has now opened up his guns on Joe Biden. Here he was last night. President Biden should continue to do what he's been doing, connecting personally with people and making jokes about the coverage of his age. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Knock, knock. Not sure if it has been standing silently in my doorway for a while now. He's a (laughs) pale fellow, big cloak, long, sharp knife on a pole. (laughs) Smiling right at me, great shot of chompers. Look into his eye sockets to see a little movie about all the fun stuff I did when I was a kid. (laughs) Good stuff, funny guy. Okay, so uh, there is a Stephen Colbert legitimately joking about the death of the president of the United States because he is uh, too old. That is not a joke that Stephen Colbert would be making if Joe Biden were riding at 55%. In the polls. And the reason they're making these jokes is because Joe Biden cannot get through a single appearance at this point without crashing and burning. Here he was yesterday attempting to tell a story about fentanyl, and um, it does not go well. As families all across the country gather this week with their loved ones for Thanksgiving, too many is going to face looking at an empty chair for the first time at Thanksgiving. Because so many people have died. That's heartbreaking. It's, uh, it really is an American tragedy. Just in the neighborhood I'm in, next door neighbor, and it's just tough stuff. People are dying, and, and I'm committed to doing everything in my power as president to get this crisis under control. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just not with it. He starts stories, he rambles off. I mean, again, everyone can see this. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 